John Deere 6 Series range transmission differential case. So this covers 6,000, 6,010, 6,020, 6,030, 6,030 premium, 6M, 6R, and sort of the 7,000s too, but we're going to say that this is mainly for the small frame. And the main reason is that we're going to identify this as small frame with these frame bolts or holes. The reason that so many of these go bad, where we really see it, is if you look at a 7220, a 7130, and 30 premium, 6140, M. Basically, those are small frame transmissions with a six cylinder engine. So, deer sold the hell out of them to counties states any municipality and a lot of the um even the i'll use the word short line manufacturers that build the uh utility easement or side mower business or whatever that is that's the tractor that they would buy because it's got the horsepower to run the machine but it's the price point is not what you know the price point's not the mid-frame so as a, and as as an example, uh, a 70, 7130 premium, seventy two thirty premium was small frame transmission. Everything was small frame on it except the engine. And so instead of buying a you know a seventy three thirty, which would have been a mid frame, but more of an, a more expensive tractor, they went with the cheaper tractor. You hear me say it all the time. We we buy what we can afford, not what we want, but we work it like what we want. Same scenario. So anyway, what happens is that those get um, they get a lot of wear and tear and abuse, and they will crack in these areas. In fact, we just sold a bare housing to a dealer this week for a six M or six R, and that's typically where we see it. Where we see it. The only thing when a guy buys a complete assembly like this, most of the time he's a guy that can do the repair, but he can't do the setup. So here I'm gonna show you how we check it, what we're doing. We're not really rebuilding many of these because one, most of them don't need it. And here's, this is a great example. This tractor, we did not do anything to it except cleaning up as far as paint. We wanted to be able to show uh, where the fire got, why it's not an issue for us and to help and try to understand that so uh first by just starting out you know we're going to identify what what it is and on our incoming tractors we do a oil sample so oil sample here came back dirty so what we did was we got into it to see, you know, where the problem was. So what we found, and this is a common thing, is that there was no mechanical damage to this transmission at all, but there, this transmission has been replaced or somebody's been into it. It's got a newer style uh, housing. Actually, it's got a newer style range and newer style rear differential. So there was residue uh, or residual left over from a f for something that's fa that had failed. So we get a dirty scan, we go in, uh, PTO's off, we flip it up on its butt, and, uh, or first, I'm sorry, we're gonna look at the differential. Now we can scope into the differential without ever actually having to go into it. There are a few specs that we can check on that. We can check the roll pattern or the gear pattern on the differential. So if everything is in spec here and check and we don't find any metal contaminants inside, we, we can quote, rule out the differential being bad. So then we flip it up on its bottom and I'm just gonna kinda have to show you here a little bit. But basically that's where we flip that up 
and we're able to spin the entire transmission around. We can look at every gear, every synchronizer. We shift it through the gear so we can get the space in there. And here's what, and here's our tools. So this doesn't take, this is how we are eliminating the need to have a skilled technician inspect parts. Okay, that's key. We're not saying repair parts, we're saying inspect parts. So, and, and this is not our actual setup, but because uh, these parts are good and are bagged up, but what we have, we will have a good gear and we have a, uh, actually we have three. We'll have a, a good gear, gear with wear, and then a bad gear. And what that does is when that's up there and it's spinning, it allows someone to have a visual guide that says, you know, this is a go or this is a no go. You can't measure a spec on a synchronizer. And while the majority of them do look like this, uh, just having the actual comparison that some that a, that a skilled technician has signed off on as a tool allows us to use his skills to do any repairs that might need to be done uh, or rebuilding, you know, if we want to or need to. So where the fire is on this, uh, it's not on any seam. So because it's not on any seam, we're not worried about an oil leak or a seal, seam leak, excuse me, because you can't, you know, we can't air test it because of the way it is. Um, we remove the brakes. We do leave these little adjusters in here. And if you buy one of these, a little thing that we know that um, it took us 25 years to figure out. Um, so I'm not even gonna mention it here. here. But uh, whatever comes in, it's what you need to use. So we've checked everything in it. We've, we're able to check the shifting in it. Um, the shift rails, the shift forks, you can see everything in it. We can't see inside the differential, but again, what we've done here is we had a couple differentials here. We had one that was good, and we had one that was bad. And back to the example is that we found contaminants inside the differential. We knew it was gonna be bad before we removed it. So we extend that information over to these. We just bought a new little, um, uh, test long little tiny one it, it does a little curl on the end I mean, you can stick it all the way up in there you can look at every gear you spin it around and uh, you can see if there's anything in there so all the contamination that was in this transmission there was none on the gears it was just in the transmission so we after we proofed that everything was good we flipped it up on its butt we've got a heavy duty uh, drain table and we just basically washed out all the contaminant that was inside of it let it drain out and um, we've got a good certified transmission it's ready to sell so this is that scenario if we can run them and drive them in the tractors we can go through the uh, service advisor step-by-step -step process to say that they're good, but when they have fire and we can't do that, all we've done is come up with a different way to be able to certify them, know that they're good, and uh, check everything off on them. We've got a little check sheet here that we've created. And so basically it, uh, it tells us what the part is. Here's an example where you see there are three possible ring and pinions. So we checked that it's a 10 and 53. 
which is just verifying what our serial number here told us, that it was a 10 and 53. We checked off on all of our gears, synchronizers, everything that was good. If there was something bad on here, then we would mark it. So if it was bad on the inside, obviously that's where we make the decision to do a part out or do a repair. If it's something that we think that is a customer's um, discretion, let's say, and my example here would be the shift valve. Shift valve works properly. We did not remove it because again, back to skilled, non-skilled technicians, but everything works on it. But you know, we would certainly recommend before you install this at a minimum replacing the seals. And if you're concerned about a leak, that would be the perfect time to put a new gasket on that and you'd be back in business. So where we're saving you the time is um, this case. We just sold a differential case for 7,500. So sold it for 7,500 and I, the, it's, it's kind of difficult to know the exact hours, the way deer breaks that down in their uh, labor. But it's probably gonna be more than, let's just say 2,500. So if we could sell one for 10,000 with an exchange and everything was based off the same thing, everything is good in yours, everything's good in ours, we're saving you the labor, everything's set up where you could put in yourself instead of your dealer, then you save money. So that's kind of the idea behind that. So track your serial number is important and your serial number on the back of your transmission case is important. You can get this on the tractor. You gotta get up underneath it a little bit. And then an image, of course your hydraulic pump's on here. And you can get this from the back of your tractor, the image of your hydraulic pump, because that tells us what uh, transmission, whether you have a uh, pressure compensated or just a, uh, I'm sorry, I can't remember the other word. Uh, pressure flow compensated. So pressure compensated is typically on your lower end tractors like this. And your pressure flow compensated is more on your uh, premium level tractors. We see them both break, but most of them are these. There's no design difference in them. So it's just the amount of weight that they're getting on the, uh, with the extra equipment on the side of them. Don't come with brakes. Uh, pretty much all the brakes are the same anyway, except there's options with them. So some are standard, some are heavy duty. So we just find that removing the brakes, but leaving our little special pieces in here allows you to put in whatever brakes that you want or your dealer wants or your mechanic. We will probably start leaving the uh, charge pumps on just because it helps us keep them sealed up a little bit. And, uh, We'll bag these up, put them on a, a good skid so that they're ready to ship.